know, industrial automation is not just about auto parts and sort of dark, dirty things. I mean, the food industry, for example, is a prime user of industrial automation. I'm with Robin Schmidt. He's Vice President of Engineering R&D with Nachi Robotic Systems. And Robin, we're standing in front of a machine here that's actually optimized for an interesting food industry application. Tell me about it. That's right. It's, uh, the model is a MC50M, stands for uh, the code for the food grade. And we've modified a number of things to make it uh, appropriate for use with uh, dairy products and contacting food where we use a NSF certified lubricant for the gearboxes. We minimize the uh, uh, places where debris could get um, entrapped and uh, special cleaning procedures uh, along with it being uh, spray down capable that we can uh, wash it down with the appropriate kind of cleansers and uh, solvents to, to keep it clean. So we've got this robot and another robot as an entry into the food grade market. Now food is an interesting one and for those of us who come from, from traditional manufacturing backgrounds, we're not used to things that are washed down environment. But I understand uh, in many cases now they're using uh, vapor phase, hydrogen peroxide disinfectants, this kind of, there's some nasty products out there that in, in the food industry at this point. Resistant to those sorts of disinfectants? Yes, uh, yeah. this, this robot's got a silver hue to it and we're using a, a food industry approved uh, coating on there called uh, Steel It, which is a stainless steel impregnated coating. Uh, on there to help with that resistance to all of the cleaners. Yeah, Robin, uh, lubrication, you mentioned that you've, you've, you've got a uh, lubrication scheme designed specifically specifically for the food industry. Historically, things like petroleum-based traditional greases, for example, in, in bearings or joints, you can't go there. Often there's sort of zinc oxide bases there. There are formulations that are not traditional. But in this case, the bearings still have to survive in a pretty high-speed, tough environment. That's right, that's right. So we've used a NSF approved lubricant for uh, food grade operation. And the only thing that we really do differently is we, we have the same speed and same payload capacity, but we do increase the replacement frequency that we have on the gear because the, that lubricant doesn't um, last as well as the petroleum-based units. But uh, we don't want to compromise uh, any, any leakage potentially getting into the food chain. Sure, sure. Now in this case, uh, we, uh, your example here uses a vacuum gripper and it is moving what are our, our considerably heavy, these are cheeses, these are large sort of cheese wheels, that's quite heavy. What is the payload of this, this unit? Now this, this robot has a payload of up to 70 kilograms, so that's appropriate for that size cheese wheel and the tooling that you would need to, to have. Uh, Robert, what's the, what's the accuracy re repeatability specs for this unit? Repeatability of this machine is uh, around a tenth of a millimeter, maybe just a little bit less than a tenth of a millimeter. Highly repeatable robot, very high speed, and with about a two meter reach from the center of its base to where it can reach with uh, any orientation. Okay, a tenth of a millimeter repeatability or with a two meter reach? Yes. Okay, that, that's considerable, and that sounds like repeatability that's far tighter than I can ever imagine a food grade application to operate. Generally, they're a little bit more forgiving in uh, packing parts, parts in and out, but uh, it's a traditional industrial robot that we've adapted for the food, food grade use. Yeah. Nachi NC50M, specialized robotics for the food industry, says Robin Schmidt.